one goal from going through. I wanted the chance to have one go and um, he wouldn't let me. This time, put it in the right place. <laughs> All I was thinking was one has to go in. We got to the World Cup final. Back in October 2000, English football was getting ready to say goodbye to an old friend. Since staging the FA Cup final between Bolton Wanderers and West Ham United in 1923, Wembley Stadium had established itself in the hearts of football followers across the globe. This was the game's spiritual home. I was brought up thinking that Wembley was the, the mecca of soccer. Since I was a little boy, you know, I, I always thought of Wembley as, as being the, the, the centre of the football universe. Fittingly, Wembley's finale would see two of the giants of the game meet in a crucial World Cup qualifier. England were hoping to provide a fitting send-off, a grand occasion, when they confronted Germany beneath the famous Twin Towers. The atmosphere, the surface, the, the tradition, um, and every player loves Wembley. From the Matthews final to England's triumph in 66, the greatest moments in English footballing history had been played out on Wembley's hallowed turf. This was to be an emotional farewell. It's been a cathedral. It's been the place where most people that I know in football, all over the world, want to come and play. It's a theatre of dreams. It's, uh, it's everybody's favourite stadium. And I mean that sincerely. Three months earlier, Kevin Keegan's England had beaten Germany at Euro 2000. Germany, now under new coach Rudy Fuller, were in no mood to be sentimental. England and Germany. This was the beginning of a new era for them. In a tough group containing Greece, Finland and an improving Albania, it was vital England got off to a winning start. Match commentary from Peter Brackley and John Barnes. Germany in the white tops, England wearing the red that they also wore back in 1966 when they tracked by four goals to two after extra time in that World Cup final. Here's Boda, good run by him. Cattell by Keown. With typical awareness, now Scholes. Caught in possession by Barak. And it will be a free kick to Germany. Scholes, the offender. Paul just too, took too long on the ball there, he should have played it. Got caught in possession. So it's a dangerous position in these conditions. Dietmar Hammer looking to be the architect here, might even have a go for goal. It's a good strike too! And he caught David Seaman totally unawares. Cracking drive by Hammer. And Germany take the lead. Inside the first 15 minutes. It's a real setback for Keegan's team. It is a setback, and I think that he caught David on a worse. David was looking to set the wall up, as you can see. He's still pointing, wanting to set the wall up. David will be disappointed with that. Well, all credit to uh, Hamann. The Keegan will be furious. England simply weren't ready. They weren't ready, but once again, it's, it's not in the corner. David got a good hand to it, and he will be he will be desperately disappointed with that. Keown. Up by Ramelov, only to Lasso. Well, he has only ever scored once for England. It's Brazil. That was a good opportunity. Rudy Voller, who is such an outstanding striker himself, played over 90 times for his country and scored nearly 50 goals. The World Cup winner back in 1990. When you were on the scene, John. Yes, I, I was, that's right, yeah. You're making me sound old because Rudy doesn't... can't imagine we're the same age looking at the, the colour of his hair. 
Here's Lasso swinging over the cross towards Cole. Well, it's a decent effort then. And he's no slouch in the air. He's going to have to change things around, isn't he? He is. We're going to have to get maybe an extra midfield player in there. Cole and Owen are fantastic players, but at the moment, they're not getting the service required. And they've been unable to make any impact up front. Beckham. Played it for Cole. And Lincoln was a little uh, over-eager then with his challenge on the Manchester United man. Been scoring freely as uh, Cole from Manchester United so far. That's Adams going in. What a good save by Oliver Kahn. My word, how did he keep that one out? Adams had sneaked in round the back. I think Novotny just lost his balance then. That led Adams in. England hopefully have arrived for the second half with renewed vigour. All right. It's a lovely ball in then for Dyer and Cole. What a good tackle that from Raymer. Dyer's really made a difference. He's come on, he's got involved, and Andy Cole was unlucky then, but a fantastic defending. Now working so hard, Germany, to deny England any real chances. Hammer. Well, that's fine distribution. Scholl has taken up another threatening position here. Mehmet Scholl. Might go all the way through. Great save, Great by, save Seaman. by Seaman. What a stop. Well, he redeemed himself there. He won't be happy about the goal he has let in, but my word, that was a great save then by the England stopper. And David Seaman got a good hand to it to push it away. Southgate with a header away to find Nick Barmby. Now Cole. A little fortuitously knocking on to Owen, but he was going up a blind alley there. Here's Scholes. England with 20 forward here, it's David Beckham. Might have a go too. Beckham strike! Oh, fabulous reaction save by Khan. Beckham unlucky. Well, that's what he gets from David Beckham when he plays in field. He picks the ball up, drives forward and unleashes a tremendous right foot shot. And it's a good save by Khan. Manchester United want more goals from Beckham and so do England. Lasso, Beckham again. Opting for Adams. Owen is in there. Making no impression though. The Germans defending doggedly here. England have taken the kick quickly. It's Beckham going for goal. Good effort once again by Beckham. I think he would have had Khan beaten had that been on target. And he just hit the back of the net. Well, it's gripping stuff now. A lot of uh, psychological warfare going on before the game with Voller having us believe that they feared England. Don't think that's been the case. Mehmet Scholl on to Boda. That's good interception though by Adams. Now Beckham. He's found Owen through the centre. Michael Owen just couldn't take it on. And then Khan brought down by Owen. A fantastic ball by David Beckham and Michael, unfortunately, has con controlled let him down. Had he controlled that, he would have been in on goal. That would have been one all. Back up to Cole. Link has gone with him. Still got his cross away. Again, some composed defending by Novotny. He's been a tower of strength back there. Beerhoff. Good reception by Barry. Played in then for Beckham. Beckham with the shots. Just a whisker away. Another good opportunity. Good defending by Gareth Barry. Because he slipped at first and Dyson was about to go past him. Picked out a great ball to Beckham. And not far away. Oh, Khan will tell you, I'm sure he had it covered had it been on target. That's how close it was. John Barnes reckon we can score two. I'll settle for one now, I think. It's Keown. 
Well, he's done it for Arsenal in terms of late goals. Beckham's in the middle of the, middle of the pitch, seeming to be carrying a knock, as you can see. And I hope he can last for the last 10 minutes because he's going to be important coming into the last 10 minutes of the match. Scores. A real test here for Carr. And he flipped it wide in somewhat theatrical fashion. Unorthodox. Beckham is clearly struggling. And you wonder now, will he see out the match? Scholes again, settling for the throw. But England are not settling for defeat, that's for sure. Balak, Scholl, he's got nobody up with him. Now he has Balak, making the extra man down this near side. Balak's cross in. Is this going to be the second one? Oh. It was Novotny who'd come racing up. That seemed to Novotny, if I'm not mistaken, coming forward. And I think the referee's actually booked him for handball. Or oh, he's given a free kick for handball. But that was very dangerous. If he could have controlled this, that would have been very dangerous for England. We have played one minute now of time added on. Mehmet Scholl, who has run and run and run. Here's Balak. It's been more like the Germany of old today. There goes Novotny once again getting forward, and he's got forward very well. What a great run then by Novotny, and it's Dysler who can finish England off here. Well, England had so many players committed forward, they were at full stretch to defend them. Keown. Here's Parla. Shaking off Haman and Balak. The Germans are looking tired. Parla. Just took it too far though. And another chance has got the conditions there in favour Ray. He played a good one too. With Karen down. Unfortunately, he just slipped at the last moment when he's about to cross it. The two minutes of added time are up. It's all over. And the last game ever to be played at the existing Wembley Stadium has ended in heartbreak for England and elation for the old enemy Germany. It was all too much for Kevin Keegan. Heavily criticised during Euro 2000, losing to Germany on such an emotional occasion was a defeat too painful. Keegan resigned immediately after the game. England were now in search of a new coach. Only three days later, England were in Helsinki to face Finland. They looked to experience. Director of coaching Howard Wilkinson was the man for the job. The circumstances were hardly ideal. Another defeat would sabotage England's hopes earlier than anyone imagined. Wilkinson had picked up the pieces before, when Glenn Hoddle had resigned during the qualification phase of Euro 2000. There was nobody more phlegmatic. A lot of sadness around, a lot of disappointment around, a lot of injuries around. Someone in the middle of that's got to take charge. And that someone is me. Morale had to be raised. Finland began with a win against Albania and had only narrowly lost their second match against Greece in Athens. It was vital England came away with a result. We're talking about a, a qualifying game for a, a World Cup and, and to lose this one puts us four, six points behind the leaders, which is not a very healthy position. Liverpool's Yari Litmanen and Sami Hippier formed the twin pillars in Finland's physical, well-organised team. This would be a test of English pride. But it was England who had the best of the game's chances. They should have been a man up midway through the first half, when Teddy Sheringham was blatantly tripped outside the area by Finnish keeper Antti Niemi. Not only did Niemi avoid a red card, Finland survived the resulting free kick. 
Finland were defending solidly. England, with no David Beckham or Michael Owen, lacked imagination and ideas. Yet with the game drifting towards a goalless draw, Ray Parler thought he'd scored England's winner minutes from time. The Arsenal midfielder's brilliant individual effort agonisingly struck the woodwork. The officials ruled, controversially, that the ball had not crossed the line. Two games gone, only one point. The World Cup finals was a distant dream. It had been a difficult start to the new millennium for English football. In the summer, they'd been beaten in the race to stage the 2006 World Cup finals by Germany. An early return from Euro 2000, Keegan's resignation, and now England were lying five points adrift in their World Cup qualifying group. A new coach had to be found quickly. I think it's in a state of a, a void. I think that um, these kind of things have happened before. But really, at this kind of stage of um, uh, a big tournament qualifying period, uh, one game into a World Cup for the coach to resign is pretty bizarre. Our football looks at its best when we're playing each other. Uh, where, when, uh, when we're up against uh, teams of, with uh, perhaps uh, more profound thoughts on the game, who've developed it not only in the skill sense but in the athletic sense, uh, then you realise that we're not as good as we think we are. We still have a marvellous conceit of ourselves, unfortunately. Inevitably, Keegan's departure sent the rumour mill spinning with names of possible successors. FA Chief Executive Adam Crozier was the man who would have the final say. The people's choice was Terry Venables. There was Sir Alex Ferguson of Manchester United. Former Inter Milan boss Marcello Lippi was rumoured to be in the frame, alongside Emé Jacquet. My personal view is that it should be Emé Jacquet. I would choose Alex Ferguson. Even before um, uh, Kevin King was appointed, I was a, an Arsene Wenger fan. And I know people say, how could you choose a, a Scotsman to run the England team? But I think the criteria should be to pick the best possible coach. You need someone outside the, you know, the, the England situation. Arsene Wenger to me um, is astute, he's uh, sensible, um, he's educated, he knows the game inside out. But I don't think Jacques will take it there. I think he's, uh, he's probably too intelligent. If going foreign was an option, one of the favourites was backing an Englishman for the job. I personally believe that uh, in England you have enough people who know football and uh, but it is important as well that the country is represented by somebody who is from the country, represents the culture from, of, of the country and uh, not somebody uh, foreign. That's why I think uh, we, are not, we are in a country with 130 years of history in football and uh, there are so many people who know football well in this country that you don't need a foreign manager. I think it's a sign of the times that they're looking at going for a foreign coach because there simply isn't someone of the English quality around. Leicester's Peter Taylor would be in temporary charge for a friendly against Italy in Turin. The defeat against Germany and Kevin Keegan's resignation had taken their toll, but this was a time to be positive, a time for the FA to look forward. I think the long-term plan of the FA now is like 10 years down the line, we're going to be winning World Cups. Well, we have heard that before, but there does seem to be a better um, sort of grassroots plan um, right, right, uh, running through Lancaster Gate. But of course, it means nothing unless you've got the right person at the helm. In the end, that right man was the Swedish coach of Italian champions Lazio. Much travelled, highly successful. For the first time, English fans had a foreign name to get to grips with. Well, uh, in Swedish, uh, it's Sven Göran Eriksson. Sven Göran Eriksson. We didn't set out to appoint a foreign coach. We actually said right from the very beginning that we wanted to appoint the best person for the job, the person that we thought would give us the most chance of succeeding. And at the top of the list of criteria we looked at was a, a sustained record of success, fantastic man management and tactical ability. And really what we said right from the start was let's find the person you know, who's achieved that over many, many years. And I think for, for me, Sven was always uh, the number one priority. There was no question of that in my mind and I was obviously absolutely delighted when we managed to secure his services. I knew there would be some backlash. I don't think you can ever prepare for that and it wasn't particularly pleasant to go through at times but you know I, th I think as much as anything that's because uh, uh, you know people sometimes have a fear of change 
uh, and concern about what that means and, and a concern quite naturally about national pride. Ericsson's regime began in February 2001 with a friendly against Spain. With Wembley now closed, the match would be played at Villa Park in Birmingham. The Spanish were in form, cruising towards qualification for the World Cup in Group 7. This would be a good test of Ericsson's younger, new-look England. So Ericsson off to a flyer, a 3-0 win over one of Europe's elite nations, and a small step in the right direction. For the coach, this getting-to-know-you exercise had served its purpose. It went well. We played good football. We won the game, and it was a marvellous uh, crowd. So it was uh, the first time with England for me, and very good. It was very good. English club football has undergone a revolution over the last 10 years. With the success of the Premiership, football has never been so popular. Now England, at international level, were undergoing their own radical transformation. Having moved HQ from Lancaster Gate to the heart of London's West End, the FA Chief Executive is a leader with a long-term vision. When we say we want to win a major tournament by 2006, it doesn't mean we're not trying to win one in the meantime. But, you know, we have in international terms an extraordinary young team full of a, a lot of talent and a lot of hope for the future. I think that uh, one of the keys uh, to the success of the team is, is the, you know, the, the team spirit from everyone in the camp, from the players through to the coaching staff, to everyone at the FA and indeed the press and the whole country. I think, I think there's a real sense of momentum, real sense of everyone coming together in the hope of achieving something which is potentially very special. Sven Joran Eriksson's first real test would come at Anfield in Liverpool as England prepared to take on Finland. It was vital England take maximum points from this their third qualifying match. The signs of improvement were noticeable, and 40,000 at Anfield expected three points. Describing the action, Peter Brackley and Ray Wilkins. England in red shirts. Finland in the white tops with blue trimmings. Here's McManaman, his first taste of the action. Back in the England fold. Now Andy Cole, good movement ahead of him from Owen. And then Cole. Oh. Andy Cole with a snapshot, only just wide. Now Neville with Gerard. Tehina. Little short on the header away. This could be promising for England now. Owen looking to take it on. Is he brought down? And there's no real complaint by him or the other England players in the vicinity and certainly no question of the referee giving a penalty there. Now Beckham. Where goes Neville. Played in for McManaman who's found some space. And then Beckham to drive it through. Got real power behind that. He's only ever scored once for England, Beckham. That was in the uh, World Cup game against Colombia back in 98. Here's Lippmann, Finland skipper. The ball in then for Johansson, and Seaman had to have his wits about him. <laughs> this goes well for England, it's Beckham! Another thrilling strike from the captain, leading by example, and that was not far away. That was a fantastic effort there from David. He moved forward there about 30 yards out. I've got to say, I thought the Finnish guys might have come and closed him down. Romela swinging this one over beyond Seaman. And Neville taking no chances. Excellent. It will cross. be a corner. Excellent ball in there, Peter. That was good football there from Nermola. It's been a pretty difficult five or six minutes for the English boys. They, they tend to be given the ball away just a, just a fraction cheaply at the moment. Uh, get back to the first five minutes when we're playing a bit of football. Nice one and two touch. I'm sure we'll get, get, uh, get a firm grip on this game. Well, we've got plenty to aim at it there with Herpia and Tihinan. Johansson is certainly no slouch in the air, and nor is Lippmann. 
with Seaman prancing up and down on his goal line. And the header got through and it's in too! Rigelati with the first header and Finland had taken the lead on 26 minutes to the dismay of Sven Goran Eriksson and the England team. Yeah, it's awful marking from our point of view. Rihilati gets a free header there. Well, I suppose that has to go down as an own goal by Gary Neville. Here's Powell. How his career has suddenly taken off at the age of 31. Does everyone have to mention my age? He says, Here's Cole with a side of goal. Well, worth a try. Here's Chris Powell on to Owen. First touch. Oh, they let him down though. Hopia up to Lippmann. Again, it's off so quickly then into the path of Johansson. More trouble for England and Seaman with an excellent save to keep him out the to get it all stem from Lippmann brilliant save, it's Lippmann again, yeah, what a lovely little touch Bannerman England a little untidy but it's back up now taking up the range, he's got Neville out to his right well found two by Beckham but it was at full stretch he's done really well, Gary Neville now can he pull it back from here, it's Cole and then Owen on the left foot and swept into the corner, England a level. And Michael Owen has done it. Brilliant football there from the Manchester United pair, Beckham and Neville down the right-hand side. Gary Neville doing ex exceptionally well there with a little chip over the, the top of Ilonen. Here we see it coming up now. David Beckham did some great work in the middle of the field, breaking out to his right-hand side. This is a lovely pass. But look at this for a bit of skill here from Gary Neville. Just a little flick over the top of uh, Ilonen. Driven ball across the box, Andy Cole with great composure. Little setback to Michael Owen. And I think he scored in that end a few times in his career already. Maybe not too many with his left foot, but he tucked it away beautifully. On by Gerard to McManaman. Trick click feet too from the former Liverpool man. Here's Scholes now. He's worked it on well to David Beckham. We'll have a go oh. here. And what a goal! Beckham strikes for England, and they've turned it round. A gem of a goal from the captain. Fantastic football, all set about by Steve McManaman, coming infield, running at defenders, going past people in the middle of the park. The build-up was so fluent, and the finish absolutely deadly. going for the throat now, Paul Scholes towards Andy Cole and then back right across off the bar at the end from Owen oh, frame with the goal and England so nearly added another one almost halfway through the second half Lippmann again he's found some space can he exploit it though, Lippmann well, straight out Seaman, who got his angles right. Here's Cole, that's been lively up front. Been a constant source of irritation, really, to the fence. Gerard, who could really strike a ball, but not this time. Here's Cole, then to Beckham again. We've seen what he can do. Gerard onto Cole from Scholes! And still, that first goal for England continues to elude him. Deserved better then by England. Well, it's taken up then by Heskey. On the charge now, he's got back up the way to his right. Still Heskey, look at this run here. Is he caught then by Herpia? Oh, he didn't like the way that Heskey went to ground then. His own teammate, huh? What a run there from Manuel Heskey. It was great work from David Beckham outside his own box, but this was powerful stuff. He saw the opening and off he went. Did he bring him down? Did he make contact? Not for me, he didn't, no. Now, this is dangerous now for Finland. Two uh, Liverpool colleagues smiling about it now, but they won't be smiling. Those Finnish defenders, so this goes in. David Beckham. 
absolutely lethal from here as he's run a line so often in the past. Here is Beckham. Good save from Amy. Really Brilliant. good save. Brilliant free kick though from David Beckham. Going across the face of the goal. And Amy doing exceptionally well to keep it out. To him, and getting wrapped up around each other. Gerard was after Cookie, and he's dispossessed it too. Terrific play by young Gerard. Here is Fowler. Oh, another stunning save by the keeper. But what good work then from Gerard. Yeah, brilliant play from Steven Gerard. He's hit the target. You can't ask much more than that. Here's Passadon with the cross. Up by Beckham, who's back there defending. Bayluna to Kuki. It's another chance for Seaman Say with his legs and from Lippmann. And again, another flying and spectacular save My by word. the England veteran. What a fantastic ball, though, from Chefty Kuki there down the left hand side. The brilliant ball in. And there's Lippmann on the back post, unmarked. Dave Seaman making a fabulous save. And this is brave. Look at that for a cross. He didn't want that to land on anybody's head there, let alone Lippmann's. And uh, this was good defending. The three Lions are back in shape on the road to Japan and Korea. And it's still set to be a bumpy old journey. <laughs> with big games to come, the one against Germany in particular. But at least Sven Goran Eriksson is off to a winning start in his first competitive game as England's new coach. The final score at Anfield in this World Cup qualifier from Group 9 is England 2, Finland 1. Eriksson had his first competitive win. Already he was able to single out two key players. We're going to see it also in the future that Owen and Beckham, they, they are and they will be very important for us. They are excellent football players. Two days later, England travelled east for a difficult match against Albania, beaten only in the last minute by Germany in Leverkusen. Providing some light relief in Tirana was Norman Wisdom. The British comic is a national hero in Albania. His films had been a favourite of former dictator Enver Hoxha. Loved in both countries, he was concentrating on playing it for laughs. They all catch my eye. Would you want the names of all lot of them, do you? Why? It's Beckham, Beckham and, and you know, all of them, all of Newton and Compton, Dennis Compton. <laughs> it was no joke for Andy Cole, though. 12 England appearances and no goals. While others around him were hitting the target, the pressure was building for the Manchester United striker to open his England account. With his country needing all three points in Tirana, Cole knew he had to start scoring soon to answer that growing band of critics. I've no doubt, and I'm sure uh, he has no doubts that he's, he's gonna, gonna do it in international football, but um, obviously, as I said before, you have your, your good patches and you have your bad patches and unfortunately Andy hasn't uh, scored a, uh, a goal in international football but as I say, it'll, it should come soon. I've been in football for a long time and it's always like that. If a centre forward don't score, doesn't score, a lot of people saying that he can't play. But for me, Andy Cole is a very good player. One of Europe's poorest nations, Albania has been recovering from years of self-imposed isolation under communist rule. Many Albanians have found it hard to adapt to recent change and have left for a new life abroad. Pride in their national team, though, serves to unite all Albanians wherever they are. That they have faith in their national team is an achievement in itself. The squad was on something of a high. Coach Medin Zega was the man responsible for that transformation. His talented squad of foreign-based players had already beaten Greece and given Germany the fright of their lives. Germany scored in the, in the last minutes, but you know, that's Germany, that's the way they play until the, the last uh, whisper of the referee, so that's football. We had to be more careful in that game, but we are satisfying uh, just for the game, the good game we, we played and for the satisfying we, we gave to the Albanian fans in uh, Germany and in Albania. This was a massive event for Albanians around the globe. They came in their thousands, wearing the black and the red of the national flag. This is the first time that uh, all the Albanian people come from all 
all around the world to see the watch this match because it's too important for us. Tickets for the match were in short supply, despite prices that stretched the budget of all but the most affluent Albanian. I'm sorry about that, what you said, that a ticket cost one week's salary. Of course, it's, uh, it's far too much, but um, I can't do anything about that. I'm sorry about that. The Albanians, though, were sure their time had come. Norman Wisdom did the warm-up routine. It took England 73 minutes to break down the well-organised Albanian defence. Michael Owen running clear to settle English nerves. Andy Cole was instrumental in England's second, providing Paul Scholes with the chance to increase England's lead. 2-0 and only five minutes left. Surely game over. But Albania gave England a real fright. Substitute Altin Racklin ran through to make it 2-1. He'd only been on the pitch for four minutes. Seconds later, Albania thought they'd equalised. Their goal, though, was controversially ruled out for offside. And in time added on, Andy Cole finally broke his duck. Good work from Emil Heskey, rewarded with a clinical finish. England with six points in three days and on a roll. Not so much players performance, more the more the win really. It was it was vitally important that we won and you know thankfully in the end we got it. After these uh, two games this is what we set our sights on, you know, coming coming home tonight with uh, seven points and you know we've done that now we've got to not get carried away again and go into the next game and keep playing like we can. England were resurrecting their World Cup campaign. Their new captain at last, smiling. For the coach, the biggest satisfaction was for his number nine, Andy Colt. Finally scored for the national team, and it's strange that uh, it took so long time because Andy Cole, as you, as we all know, is a very good player, playing many years for Manchester United and scoring a lot of goals. So the ice was broken there, and uh, hope that he will score a lot of goals for us in the future. England would now have a long 11-week wait before their next qualifier against Greece. In the meantime, they would entertain Mexico in an international friendly at Pride Park in Derby. The Mexicans were already struggling in their CONCACAF qualifying group for Asia. If they'd come for a respite, they were mistaken. Mexico were outclassed. Of course, every time you win in football, it gives you moral, it gave you, gives you... The players starting to believe always in what we are doing, the way we are playing, the way we are working. So it's important, even if it was a friendly. The French simply adore Zidane. The Brazilians marvel at Rivaldo. The Portuguese worship Luis Figo. The role of playmaker is vital to any successful team, asks Sven Joran Eriksson. He has David Beckham, and such was his belief in the Manchester United midfielder, he made him his first captain. The decision to make David Beckham captain has been inspired because Beckham is not a natural leader. I mean, even he himself has said it, but he's grown into the role. And what Ericsson clearly realised, which I think the rest of us possibly didn't, is that it has made Beckham a better footballer. By this time, the impact of Ericsson on England had been dramatic. Four matches, four wins. A World Cup qualifying campaign that looked dead was now up and running. In March, England had entertained Finland, knowing three points were vital. A ragged first-half performance saw the sides level at 1-1. Early into the second half, Beckham won the game for his country. A world-class strike from a world-class player. Ericsson's young side had posted a warning. When you look at the players and, and you see the quality of the players and then you look at their ages and it's just like, wow, you know, this, this is some squad. And, and looking at it, you think, well, this is going to be some squad for the next few years as well. A new haircut attracted Beckham more attention. Beckham's revival under Ericsson continued in the friendly with Mexico. A tremendous free kick, helping England to a convincing 4-0 victory. But criticism reigned in before and after the game about that haircut. There are many people of a certain age who will agree wholeheartedly that David Beckham should not be going out leading England with a Mo Eaton or a Mo Hawk haircut. Personally, he can walk out and start naked 
far as Ab going to What's it matter at all? I think personally, Beckham should have had that done totally. I reckon the whole team should have had that done. Obviously, died red. Beckham's influence would only grow. The player, so vilified after his World Cup red card against Argentina three years earlier, was responding perfectly. First class and uh, improving, getting better and better. So I think the choice to have Beckham as a captain is absolutely perfect. The 6th of June 2001, England travelled to Greece. It was a good time to go to Athens. The Greeks' campaign was lying in ruins. They'd suffered a 4-2 home trouncing by Germany. But just four days before, Finland had held Germany to a 2-2 draw in Helsinki. So if England could win in Athens, they would have a glimmer of a chance of automatic qualification. It's Beckham. Gerard. That's more like it for England. Good save by the goalkeeper. Nikopoulidis and Robbie Fowler got every last inch of his body weight into this header. Fowler, lovely nutmeg. And he's got Owen away here for England. Michael Owen, side netting. Beckham. Beckham for England, it took a deflection. Phil Neville. Still Phil Neville. Heskey for England. 1-0. Skulls. England have punctured the Greek defence. And it's Paul Skulls with his 13th international goal. He's now scored in England's last three internationals. It was made here by Heskey. Great touch by Heskey. And an impressive prod home by Paul Skulls who's rattling in the international goals now. Beckham was clattered from behind. 2-0! Game, set and match. And England's captain goes over to the fans to celebrate. It was a devastating free kick. Nikopoulidis in the Greek goal was a mere spectator as this ball flew wide of the defensive wall and came in at a sharp angle. The result today, we, we are much closer to the first or second post in, in our group. But at this point, I think we should try, uh, we should try very, very hard to, to have the first first uh, place but uh, we'll see after the holiday we take holiday now it was only four months since Sven Joran Eriksson took over as England national team coach since sections of the press had a field day much of the country struggled to understand why a foreigner was given the biggest job in English football but what a transformation five wins later and Eriksson was becoming a national treasure his origins lie in provincial Sweden. The success of the England team has been avidly followed in the tiny town of Torsby. Close to the Swedish-Norwegian border, this outpost of just 5,000 is rightly proud of their most famous son. He's put Torsby on the map. It means, above all, I think, pride that we have such a uh, you know, well-known and, and successful person coming from Torsby. Sven Joran Eriksson was born and grew up in a modest house a short distance from the local school. Football here is part of the social fabric. It's the kind of town where everybody knows everybody else's business. Eriksson's newfound notoriety, though, also has its downside. Torsby is not used to being the centre of mass media attention. We had an invasion, yes, just the days after he got the appointment. And we had a lot of, yeah, all sorts of papers, television, media, all sorts of media from England was coming into Torsby and interviewing people and filming and a lot of attention. 
England's coach began his career as a journeyman defender for the local team in Torsby. An industrious, if not gifted, player, it was his friends in Torsby who suggested that coaching might be his real strength. As they say, the rest is history. In August, it was back to work as England prepared for another international friendly, this time against Holland. The World Cup finals were less than a year away, but for Louis van Gaal, it still seemed a long way off. Dutch qualification was on a knife edge, to be settled by a crucial showdown with Ireland. Holland hadn't missed out on a final since 1986. For Ericsson, this would be a chance to fine tune before England's looming, crucial visit to Germany. I look forward to this game. It's a very competitive game and I know Van Gaal. He will, not, will try to not lose that game, he will try to win it and the same for us. This would be a game with a definite edge. The venue, Tottenham's White Hart Lane, would be packed. Now the norm for England games. Largely because winning was becoming such a habit. And after five victories in five games, England went into this match brimming with confidence, even if Eriksson intended to experiment rather more with his lineup than Van Gaal. Manchester United's new signing Ruud van Nistelrooy was among the Dutchmen out to make a point. I would not say that it was good to lose that game because it's never good to lose football games, but um, I think we learned a lot about that game. Holland played very well. We changed a lot of players, we didn't start up with the best uh, formation and so on. And uh, we had very poor attacking football. We didn't take good positions, we lost the ball and so on. And we saw some of that game together then after uh, in a video. And I think we learned a lot of that. They were billing it as the game of the decade. It always matters when Germany meets England, but this was a match which would almost certainly take the winners directly to World Cup 2002. The Bavarian capital of Munich was the venue, a city best known for its club Bayern, its annual beer festival, and Germany's near-perfect record there. England chose to stay in the town centre. Would the Mandarin Hotel be a good omen for a team aiming for Japan and Korea? Beaten only once in a home World Cup qualifier in 60 years, Germany expected their team to deliver. All English eyes were on David Beckham. Would he recover in time from a groin injury? He did uh, more or less everything today and he did well. So I think he will play. I had my first run out this morning, which was uh, good to get out of the way and uh, I feel good after that. So fingers crossed I'll either be training with the team tomorrow or Saturday morning. In the end, Beckham was fit, boosting England's hopes of reversing that German victory at Wembley, a win the Germans were keen to downplay. It's, I think, nearly a, a year ago since I scored or since we won at Wembley, and uh, I think there were many stories written and uh, reported about that, uh, about that game, and I think we should leave it and um, concentrate on the game on, on Saturday now. In Owen Hargreaves, England had some inside knowledge. The proud owner of a Champions League winner's medal with Bayern he was counting on some local support. The German fans will obviously be on the side uh, for the German team, but I'm sure there'll be some Bayern fans out there hoping that things go well for me as well. Faced with the arrival of around 10,000 English fans, the German police maintained a watchful eye over the city centre. Most fans were content to enjoy the beer and dream about a first win in Germany since 1965. In many ways, it's a sort of rivalry between Tweedledum and Tweedledee. I think uh, what sort of uh, makes uh, the Germans and English so keen to beat each other is the similarity between them. The odds were stacked against the English. The Germans just didn't lose at home. They'd qualified for every World Cup finals entered since 1934. If England were to prevail, they needed to rewrite the record books. And at Munich's Olympic Stadium on September the 1st, 2001, that's just what they did. Commentary comes from Trevor Brooking and John Motson. Harman now sees an opportunity to put Balak in possession. And Nerville to Janka! It's a goal for Germany! And it's Karsten Janka! It's 
Michael Ballack who plays the ball through to Oliver Nerville. The header on has England standing around really. And Yanka drops it home. There's great build up. Look at Nerville backpedaling, gets behind Rio Ferdinand, who picks up the runner. So Campbell doesn't watch Yanka. You've got to say they were both ball watching. This is Gerard looking for Owen. Well, the free kick's been given. It was Deisler who pushed his elbow in the back of Owen there. Silly place to give away a free kick. There's oh, ridiculous there. Mike was going to find it very difficult to do anything with that. Now David Beckham over on that side. No doubt curling it in towards the goal. Now can England hit back? Gerrard is standing just behind Scholes. And uh, Saul Campbell is up. Beckham takes. Gerrard waiting here. Oh, there's uh, Campbell getting in first. Now it's come... All the way back to Neville. Now, are they offside? No, they're not. There's a chance of an equaliser here. And they've done it. Michael Owen yet again for Egan. It's the Germans' turn to stand like statues. Khan came out, but he was all over the place. <laughs> what a start to this game. Nick Barmby, I thought, was going to head it towards goal. Very unselfish, though. Knocked it square. Michael Owen didn't panic. Composed himself and kept it down. Beckham takes, not one of his better ones, but it's a second chance for him to get the ball in. Gerard. Oh, it's it, it, yes! Gerard's shot was deflected, but it's 2-1 England! A smiling Sven. And a jubilant English end of the stadium. Just brush Michael Owen as it went through, but I don't think anybody does get a touch. Barnby who nearly touched it, but it's a goal for Gerard. It's a goal for England, and they lead Germany 2-1 in the World Cup qualifier at half time. Here comes Heskey. Not allowing me to finish. Beckham. Now can he finish? Heskey. Oh, heads it down. Owen again. This is not easy to hit, I can assure you, and he's just pinged it sweetly, and he's got the power to beat Carr. Oh, Owen's through again for England. What a shot for the hat-trick here. Owen! Oh, this is getting better and better and better. One, two, three for Michael Owen. England lead 4-1 in Germany. Goals again now. Heskey's to his left on marks. Emil Heskey, could it be five? Yes, it is! This is developing into one of the most memorable performances that an England team has put up in recent years. Listen to this. Germany won, England five. <laughs> Even Sven-Jorin Eriksson looked on in disbelief. He hoped for a victory. He'd ended up masterminding one of the great England performances. It's great to, to score a hat-trick, obviously. Um, but, you know, a one-all, um, David Seaman pulls off a, a world-class save, and uh, maybe if, if he hadn't done that, then we were 2-1 down at half-time. It was extraordinary, you know, it's, uh, you look up at the scoreboard and you see the 5-1 and you find it hard to believe, but it's, 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 uh, it's the real thing and uh, we've enjoyed the night, but we know now we've got to focus on the big game on uh, Wednesday. You, you hope to win the game, of course, and you hope to win it 1-0, 2-1, something like that, and uh, uh, I couldn't believe that we, should, uh, that we could win it 5-1. It, uh, you can't go to Germany and win 5-1 normally. <laughs> it was just terrific and, and you know when you see it from, from the inside you see just how much hard work by a lot of people goes into achieving something like that and uh, you know in the end both Sven and I have got a lot invested in this partnership and uh, it was great to see uh, some of those investments come to fruition. 
England could now go top of the group. A euphoric squad had only three days to prepare for their next game with Albania. It was vital they didn't squander their advantage at St James's Park, Newcastle. Not surprisingly, Eriksson stuck with the same 11 heroes. Owen, oh, had two to police in there. The keeper came out very rashly. No penalty. He skipped into the box end. He has blistering pace. He was so quick to readjust here. Now he's gone past the keeper. And I reckon Mr. Strakosia is rather lucky to get away with that. Gerard looking to release Michael Owen. He'll have two for company most of the night, I'm sure. But he's too quick for them here. Played in by Owen. They had cover this time, Albania. Here's Gary Neville. Another dangerous ball swung over and it's Nick Barnby just wide. Yeah, and he knows he might have done better there. He got goal side. Beautiful ball played into him. Swung over, so invitingly by Beckham. Barnby the wrong side of the goal. Barnby on a run now, good play by him too, still Nick Barnby and Heskey! Desperate goalkeeping by Strakosha, and somehow Albania survive. Great dart into the box here from Nick Barnby, certainly unsettled a couple of defenders, and almost set up Heskey. Gerrard stabbing it off towards his Anfield colleague, Michael Owen. He normally does well here, he's got seven goals in the past. Oh, it was a real chance then again. I think everyone was caught out by Owen. Scholes, going for goal! Well, he totally deceived the Albanian defence then, Michael Owen. Barnby was far post, that's two really good chances he's had so far. Again, the trickery, the sorcery, the footwork of Owen. Simply had defenders struggling, trailing in his wake. And Barbie, I think, was trying to tuck it back there for Heskey. And Scholes driving wide. It was Murati. What a good ball, too. A crash in the box end. Ashley Cole rather lost his bearings. In fairness, there was no real complaint from the Albanians. But it was a worrying moment then for England. Look at the room that Paul Scholes had found then. Scholes with a shot. It's shot down. Scholes again. And it squirms away. Wide of goal. But they uh, suddenly had a different concentration then, the Albanians. No one had picked up Scholes, and they almost paid for it. And it's back up now. Tearing at that. Albanian defence. Steely-eyed David Beckham. Having a go for goal. Well, the keeper managed to get a piece of it. He was taking no chances. For that Srakosha. Here's Scholes. Again, sitting through, this goes once more. Gerard. Made by Fakash, but only as far as Sol Campbell. Just over two minutes of the first half remaining. England nil, Albania nil. Scholes, it's Michael Owen! Fabulous finish! Wonderful vision to locate it. And Michael Owen off the volley steered it in. And superbly created by Scholes. He stayed onside here. What technique then for Michael Owen. Four England goals in two games.
and England at last had the breakthrough. Campbell to Neville. Now Gerard. Wanting to move it up front. He's found it too with Beckham. We've got Fowler in the middle. Owen on the edge of the box. Here is Michael Owen. Anything's possible with him. Fowler! Well, a good reaction save by Strakosha. Owen, in truth, didn't really get hold of this. But you can see uh, Fowler's clearly onside. There's a defender coming out. Ashley Cole, who was careless. And Daly on a great run here. And this could be an opportunity. Oh, rather wasted. England got sloppy. And they were let off the hook. Cole's mistake. Go back into Dede. And Seaman very relieved to see it fly wide. Fowler creating that route for himself. He's got skull square of him. Now Beckham and Gerard. He's got the kind of range against Germany. It's McManaman. And he's seen the keeper off his line and couldn't deliver in terms of the finish. Actually, is really what's happened. It's Vakosha. Great as a defensive headers, you'd have to say. The England fans doing their best to raise the volume now, lift the team, and see them through this final stage. Beckham. Played in for Fowler. Fowler snapshot. And well gathered in by Strakosha. I think it might have just taken a deflection on the way. He's down very quickly to keep it. Neville. Neat little dummy there. By Fowler, it almost came off, almost unsettled the Albanians. Now they're trying to disturb England at the other end with Murati. Going for goal! And terrific save by David Seaman. Goodness me. Well, I was making the point earlier, he's not had much to do, but he was certainly on top of his game here, at his most alert to keep up Murati. That was bending in. was Neville towards Campbell Torrey for tight old clearance set straight to Becker a wonder save by Strakosha to keep his team in this game with just over five minutes left it was such a good chance for Becker given his ability from this kind of range Carragher will just be sitting in the midfield. He won't be uh, Trek Trek too far forward, I'll wager. Beckham. Now to Neville. And Scholes. Fowler with a sweet turn. Still Robbie Fowler. He might go all the way here. Oh, beautifully done. And surely now, surely now, the points are safe. For England, Robbie Fowler, a beaming smile from the coach, such relief for him, it's the Liverpool boys again. Owen towards the end of the first half, and now his Anfield teammate Robbie Fowler skipping through to add the second. England 2, Albania 0, and at long last you feel surely they have fended off the challenge of this plucky Albanian team. Final whistle will spark off scenes of wild celebration, I'm sure, among the England fans. Robbie Fowler. On by Carragher to Scholes. The door to the World Cup Finals has been flung wide open. Michael Owen with another wonder goal to set England on their way. One more victory now.
and England surely will be sailing through that door and heading for next year's World Cup finals in Japan and Korea. For the first time since taking over as coach, Sven Joran Eriksson was leading England into a World Cup qualifier with his team on top of their group. After gaining maximum points from Eriksson's first five competitive games, the task in the final qualifier with Greece was simple. Win again, and England would be going to Japan and Korea. I'm very happy to be in this situation. Uh, I said the same thing before Germany. Uh, to have the chance, even before Germany, to win the group if you beat, beat it Germany. And it's the same today. We Now it's even better because it depends on us. England's preparations for the game were upset by the absence of three key players. Striker Michael Owen, goalkeeper David Seaman and his Arsenal teammate Sol Campbell. Ericsson would recall informed Spurs striker Teddy Sheringham for a match eagerly anticipated by the English public. Having already beaten Greece in Athens, a comfortable win was predicted. After all, Ericsson had carried out an amazing turnaround. Done tremendous, done really, really well. Uh, I've always been a big fan of the Swedes, right back to Abra and the Eurovision Song Contest. So. Come on, England. Ah, he's done a good job, brilliant job. Top man. I think he's marvellous, really good. I did first of all, but now, marvellous. You've got to give credit where credit's due. I think he's done marvellous. I think he's lifted the England team and the country so much. After their disastrous World Cup campaign, even the most passionate Greek supporters were downbeat. Greece had won only two of their seven qualifying matches. But with a new German coach, Otto Rehagel, in charge, they were keen to put on a good show. Rehagel knew that a shock result at Old Trafford would benefit his compatriots as the Germans prepared to meet Finland in Gelsenkirchen. And for one member of Rehagel's squad, the game also offered an excellent chance to frustrate his adopted homeland. I know they will qualify, but I don't prefer them to go straight with the first position. I would prefer them uh, to take a draw or win tomorrow and still qualify there. I don't expect Greece to do such a game as they did against Finland away. I expect, expect them to play much, much better for themselves, for the manager, for the country and everything. So I think it's not going to be an easy game. How right he was. 66,000 crammed into Manchester United's Old Trafford Stadium. It was a game that would have a nation watching from the edge of their seats at the start, from behind their sofas at the finish. from right to left, Gary Neville with his first touch to Beckham. Heskey on the chase already, and Bokoros didn't clear that properly, Robbie Fowler gets a touch. More than a touch, Paul Scholes, Scholes in the first minute, and the goalkeeper trying to save the corner. It's a free kick to Greece against Steven Gerrard. And uh, Zagarakis, the captain, who's played over 60 times for his country, has put the ball down. England just uh, looking at number 11 there, Nikolaidis. Martin Keown, the player, marking him at present. It comes out for a free throw of uh, Ashley Cole. Hope the atmosphere is coming over to those of you at home. It's uh, very buoyant, very bubbly. Music being played and flags being waved and down there, there's Ray Hagel, the German coach of Greece. He's uh, had great success in the Bundesliga with Werder Bremen and Kaiserslautern. A bit of a Brian Clough figure in that he won the championship with two unfashionable clubs. Now he's in charge of Greece and here's number 10, Karagounis. Here he is again, in fact, he's got Fisas on that side as well. This is uh, the left-back Fisas now. And that's a free kick given against Fowler. About 35 yards out. And Nikos Davizas wanted to take that quickly. He had a, an option on the far side. But it's been put down now by Zagarakis. Nigel Martin will be having a long look at this. 
They've only formed a two-man wall, England. And Zagalakis shoots well away. That's a poor effort. Uh, I think he was right to have the shot. This is Scholes for England. And uh, Gerard wasn't favourite to win that. And when he put his foot in, he got caught by Dabizas. There was nothing strictly wrong. Uh, it, it was there to be won. A little bit of a gentle knockback by Nick Barnby would invite it to challenge a two-footed challenge, but he did get possession of the ball. But uh, I think it was the fact it was two-footed that uh, it was penalised, and uh, Gerard certainly felt that. He's back on his feet, Stephen Gerard, and Dabizas hurries back into defence. Keown has come forward now. Beckham has put the ball down, and there's a roar going down the old trapper. They're wondering if he's going to shape up for a 40-yard shot. Feel the, uh, the buzz going round the ground here. Well, it was actually Dabizas who cleared it to Haristeas on the far side. Nicolidis comes inside Cole. And now Casapis, number eight, that's well away. Here's Gerard. David Beckham goes down. Tackle by Patsuzoglu, the right back. Free kick to England. Well, it's just starting to get a little bit closer now, more a uh, danger area, and it's certainly not the side that you want to be conceding free kicks. And this one, I'm sure, is a, a little bit more of an optimistic distance. Well, the law goes up again as Beckham shapes up. is on his way forward just in case, so is Gary Neville. This is Beckham. Oh, it's a ball of Nikopolidis's range to get across his goal and clear it. Well, it was 35 yards out, and because of the distance, it gave the keeper enough time to get across just to palm it beyond the post. Good free kick, though. Beckham now takes the corner. Heskey in the near post position. Goalkeeper this time not so severely tested. Nikopolidis, who's winning his 15th cap. Fowler was caught short there, tried to make up for it, it's Karagounis who's away and Greece are playing better than we're expecting them to play and Martin has to make a fairly laboured save there from Karagounis. <laughs> this is Scholes. Now then, Zagarakis for Greece. Aristeas down the right-hand side. It's a corner to Greece. They've started brightly really for a team that have had such a poor time in the group Karagounis will go across to take the corner and Harris Dias the number nine is giving England a bit of concern standing just behind the penalty spot here Bokolos and Davizas have come forward from the back and there is Harris Dias it took a block from Beckham Zagaraki shoots came off for Heskey This lad, who scored against Germany actually, having been given his chance from the start, is causing England to really rock a bit back there. This is a good effort from the number nine. Beckham. On by Barmby. To Fowler. Now Beckham. Just outside the area, Beckham goes down. The tackle was by Karagounis, number 10. And this is closer now for Beckham than the last one. Uh, David Beckham did well, uh, stretched to, to get possession. Got the knock on his ankle, but uh, once he made contact with that, it's in a position where certainly he could go either side and the goalkeeper is going to be tested, I'm sure, this time. So, 29 minutes gone, David Beckham to take the free kick for England, who need a lift at the moment. He scored from a free kick in Athens, you may recall, in June, England's second goal that night. Not so successful this time, maybe it's slightly shaken up by the tackle. Here's Konstantinidis. 
Zagarakis. Gerard fell over in making the tackle. Harris Dias, Patsa Zoglu. And well done, the fullback. Right to the line, and that could have it may still be. And Harris Dias comes. Oh, and Greece have scored! Harris Dias, who's been giving England so much trouble, has given Greece the lead. Sven Gore and Eriksson's team a goal behind. Oh, what a blow for England. This man has been so impressive in the first half, the number nine. Patsa Zoglu, the right back, made tremendous progress. The ball wasn't properly cleared. And Harris Dias beats Martin down by his right hand, Trevor. Well, it's, it's been a sloppy opening half. And Patsa Zoglu does well. And it's a very good strike by Harris Dias. This is Beckham. There was a push there, was not by Constantinidis, not given. But this right, we'll be seeing Cole and Sheringham, or maybe even McManaman, because the, uh, the 11 who've started have not gelled at all. Constantinidis for Greece. In the last minute of the first half, or the last of the 45, anyway, Karagounis. Down the middle is Nicolidis getting the other side of Ferdinand. More trouble for England, and Ferdinand able to make a recovery. Interception. That looked worrying. Great ball in, uh, good running by Nicolaitis. He, he just got the wrong side of Rio Ferdinand, and, and luckily for him, it just held up on the bounce and it enabled Rio Ferdinand to get back. This is Heskey. Taking on Vokalos. Comes inside and there's a chance. Sean oh, Oates come up. Konstantinidis. And presumably gone out for a corner. Well, he nearly got, it nearly was a good from Greece there. But nearly was an own goal. Nicopolidis then, I thought, was trying to keep it in play. It must have gone out. Otherwise, Robbie Fowler would have tucked it back in the net. But uh, uh, can they get something from this corner? This is Beckham with the corner. Goalkeeper didn't get there. Defender did. And now Karagounis on the break. Look at Greece here. Referee has gone back to the penalty area. There's a Greek player injured. Yeah, it was a terrific header as well uh, in a deep, you know, deep situation. And, uh, well... Frustration in England, players talking amongst themselves. They're just looking at Emil Heskey, got his wrong side, the defender. That was off a defender, yes, it did go out. Forward by Gerard. Cole tries to get in behind Vokalos. Greece are going to have some defending to do now, you can be sure about that. Gerard got it back, got it at Ben from Fowler, tried to play Andy Cole, and he's onside. Goal for England. Good save, the committee this Cole again. Goalkeeper twice. Well, the keeper did very well. It was good play by Gerard, getting into the areas where you want him as a central midfielder. Good pass, he was onside, and the shot was doubly saved by Nicopolidis. This is Gerard. Steven Gerard comes off Patsazoglu. Oh, we're going to be in for some exciting second half here. Here comes Karagounis for Greece. England are in trouble again. He's beaten Gary Neville. And he could have put the match beyond England's reach. Karagounis. Gerard. Skulls closing in here. Full Skulls! Oh, the goalkeeper just put an arm up and took it out the sky. Well, the much better passing and movement from England. Great ball from Gerard. Look at Skulls making his run. I think he does superbly. And you've got to say, Nicopolidis didn't commit himself. He stayed on his line and then reacted. He could have got stranded halfway out, but he anticipated what Skulls was going to do well. Andy Cole for England. Beckham to his right. Now then. Scholes is in the middle, so is Fowler. This isn't working out here. What about what about Teddy or even McManaman? Look at the number 10. Look, there he is again. Look, 10, 15 yards of space and running with it. There's nobody anywhere near him for England. They've got to hope for an offside. They haven't got it. It's Gary Goodis. It could be 2-0. Oh, that would have been curtains for England. Well, that was a classic example of how uh, you're just giving too much room to a player. And he, he, he looked on in the end like a five-a-side game, and he tried to take too long and pick his spot. He should have made it 2-0. Terrific play by Beckham. He's the one England player who wins the business at the moment, and he's the only one. And 
There's going to be a substitution. Well done, Nigel Martin. Kept England in it. Robbie Fowler's coming on. Not a good day for him. Well, he chose the right way well, didn't he, Nigel Martin? Stood up, didn't commit himself, made it difficult, but it was still an opportunity that the Caraguna should have taken. It's still 1-0. Beckham to take the free kick. Teddy Sheringham is on. Oh, it's come off. Oh, it's gone in. And Teddy, Teddy Sheringham seems to have had an immediate effect. What an amazing... That is incredible. Well, he only just got on the pitch seconds earlier. What on earth can you say about that substitution? I think it was a combination with the defender. He's so, yes, I think Konstantinidis may have got a touch here. Look, he's tried the back header and he's looped in. And I, I think you've got to give it clearly to Teddy Sheridan. It was a great back header. He's got in front of the marker. No one's covered it. And well, but 10 seconds, not even that, is he on the pitch? Well, is that a record for an England substitute? He goes up with Konstantinidis, gets the flick, and it's in. Teddy Sheringham for England, his 11th goal. At the age of 35, he may have rescued Sven Gore Eriksson in England. Fisas is going to come in from the far side. Basin has to take the free kick. Davizas is forward for Greece as well. Aristeas, Bazinas. Martin Keon doesn't get the ball away. Oh, a chance, and it's a goal! Nikolaidis has made it 2-1 to Greece. Oh, shock horror. Eric oh, Stagger. England didn't get the ball away, and Dennis Nikolaidis swooped to make it 2-1, and Greece have taken the lead for the second time. Well, they didn't get the ball away. Gary Neville, the right back, plays him on because he's the wrong side of Rio Ferdinand. That's why he brushes him off. It's Rio Ferdinand on the floor. Sheringham. Oh, well, I don't know about that free kick, Teddy. I rather think Bokolos was harshly treated. He used all his experience to get that one. That, that was running away from Teddy Sheridan, but it's a good shooting position. Well... It gives David Beckham opportunity, that's for sure. Uh, the Greek ball forming on the 18-yard line. Martin Keown goes to join Andy Cole and Heskey on this side of the penalty area. Dick Joel, the referee from Holland, really should have another couple of yards back, I think. Neville's saying they're not 10 yards, I don't think they are either, but here's Beckham. Curls it, goal! No, side netter. I thought for had got inside the post from here. Well, it was a nearly an action replay of the goal he got in the away game. Saw it beforehand, there was no chance of the keeper getting across to it. So, so unlucky, it was a superb free kick. Another couple of yards, strangely enough, further out, and it would have had time to get in and creep inside that near post. Beckham, there is still hope, still Beckham, while as Beckham was always hope, free kick. Free kick against uh, Konstantinidis. They're in the last minute in Gelsenkirchen, it's nil-nil there. We've got two and a half minutes plus stoppage time to go here, and England are 2-1 down. If ever, ever you needed a Beckham special for the free kick, this is it. Thumping here, many more at home. Beckham, deflection, oh, he carried it around the wrong side of the post. It's a corner, though. Oh, the crowd, <laughs> not quite sure what to do there. They're all on edge, but they're giving Beckham a terrific reception in that corner. Can he deliver the ball that could rescue England's World Cup hopes? Stephen Gerrard is coming forward as well now. No one to get on the end of that for England. Oh, he got a free kick out of that. Oh, that was a bit harsh again. I don't think... Oh, that's 
Stratonidis. I think it's got a case there, but who's arguing if you're English? It's a free kick 25 yards out in what is probably the penultimate, penultimate minute of the game. Everybody, bar the Greek supporters, play for a goal. Beckham to take. The 93rd minute at Old Trafford. Beckham! It's a fantastic ending to a very, very poor performance. And he is a lucky manager, and he deserves the goal because Beckham has virtually played Greece on his own. What a curler! Right in the corner, Trevor Brooking. Well, what a goal. Absolutely fantastic. He chased himself all over the pitch. He's won tackles, he's taken three kicks, and look at that reaction. That is a top top class free kick and goal wonderful wonderful stuff and he thoroughly deserves it Trevor Brooking and I are standing here looking at the referee willing him to blow his whistle and he's going to do that right now and England go through to the World Cup finals automatically with a 2-2 well, look at the celebration of every England player going up to David Beckham because it's just been announced, the German result, that's what the reaction is. And David Beckham has been an absolute hero. They'd left it so, so late, but it was mission accomplished. England were going to Japan and Korea. And at Old Trafford, his home ground, David Beckham, England's captain, wore the widest smile. His contribution had been immense. To qualify today here in Old Trafford, in front of that marvellous crowd, it's uh, beautiful. We'd had so many free kicks today that um, I wanted one of them. You know, it seemed like if we didn't get that one, we would have had a couple more later on. And um, so I wanted the chance to have one go, and um, he wouldn't let me. Fair dues. You know, he's, he's the man on the free kicks, and uh, he come up trumps. To be honest, uh, all I was thinking was one has to go in because I'd had like about 10 free kicks. I don't think I've had as many as that in a game. And uh, I'd been practicing practicing them yesterday. I uh, scored a few yesterday, so uh, I knew one had to go in. What an amazing turnaround from only 12 months earlier. Sven Joran Eriksson had achieved what many thought impossible. England's new vibrant team can look forward to the World Cup with confidence. I think we have a team. Um... Who, um, who, could, um, who could win. We've got a clear vision, a clear plan, and we know what we're trying to achieve. We need, of course, to have the best players, because you, you need to, to have that if you're going to win uh, the World Cup, of course. I'm very happy that we are there, and uh, I look really forward to, to June next year. It was one of the most dramatic campaigns in English football history. We'll leave you with another look at some of those memorable moments that clinched England their dream ticket. World Cup 2002, here we come.